I feel 10 feet tall right now and strong as ox. What's up, YouTube? It's Big Ryan, the fat guy. Shout out to the audio team on Sunday Night Football for playing round and round after that back-to-back -back interceptions. Love will find a way, just give it time. Bam, You're bam, watching, bam. Exactly. You're watching the NFL Week 15 Picks Against the Spread video for the 2018 NFL season. Last week, Big Ryan, the fat guy, went 10-5 and five against the spread. Mm -hmm. Congratulations in our pick and pool for us for coming first, as well as the pick six. 10-5, and five, that's not too shabby. It's nice to be back on top, fat guy. Why did I go against Oakland? Double-digit dogs at home. I broke my own rules. I broke my own rules. It you bit did. me in the... Ringo! You did break your own rules, but hey, we still did well. You can compete against oh, I us. I <laughs> You can compete against us each week. The link is in the description and comment section. We look forward to you playing with us next week. Fat guy for the season, we're 199 and eight against the spread, so we're back on top. Yeah, we're we are, we above, are. Above water. I mean, it's normally like not that big a deal, but it's been a struggle. And for everyone that's stuck with us, thank you, but it has been a struggle. So yeah, we finally won one for the Gipper. We got it done, 10 and five. But whatever, I mean, there's lots of you guys who've had plenty of good weeks and we've had plenty of bad ones. So uh, right, it's just good to be back. On to our NFL week 15, picks against the spread. Let's start on Thursday night, fat guy, where the Los Angeles Chargers travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. 52% of betters are on the Chargers, 48% on the Chiefs as three and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? I'm gonna take the Chargers. I know, I'm sorry Chiefs fans, I go against you every week. Chargers, they're, they're pretty hot right now. They are hot right now. We're getting three and a half points, but um... It's a divisional game. This game is for the division, folks. Chiefs were very lucky to beat the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know if they're gonna have the same luck against the Chargers. Chargers can really get after it. They didn't even have that good a performance against Cincinnati. But I like the LA Chargers and I like the points. Chargers are hot right now. Now we have two games on Saturday. We'll start with the Houston Texans traveling to New York to take on the Jets, where 43% of betters are on the Texans, 57% on the Jets as seven point underdogs at home. Fat guy, who you got? I've been going against Houston all year, because frankly, I don't think they're that good. Houston's had a pretty good record, though. They're on a pretty good run. But I'm going to take the New York Jets because I get all those points at home. The Jets are capable of doing something. They can stop people. They've had a couple good good games this year, a couple bad ones as well. But I like that I got seven points, and I like that at home. Next up, the Cleveland Browns travel to Denver to take on the Broncos. 31% of early betters are on the Broncos at home as three-point favorites. Fat guy who you got. We're going Denver. I don't trust Cleveland traveling. The Cleveland Browns, they, they, they did right by us. I love the Cleveland Browns. I mean, I'm wearing a Raiders hat, but I am traditionally a Browns fan. I had my Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras beads on earlier, just showing the crowd my goods. It was quite the show. That yeah, wasn't so bad. But Cleveland Browns managed to beat the Flounder and Carolina Panthers, who I believe have lost, what, five straight now? That's too bad for them. Too bad for Panthers, Dan. Fans, Jay Norman, I'm shouting out to you. They are taking the L that weekend. But anyways, more about the Browns. They're on the road in Denver. Denver is just typically a tough place to play. They managed to, you know, bust off wins against the likes of Pittsburgh. Mind you, Pittsburgh, I guess, doesn't travel well either because they've lost in Denver and now in Oakland. I, mean, I just feel like I'm talking about every other team. But I don't think, I don't trust Cleveland to travel to Denver and do well. Denver's not my favorite team. But I think Denver's going to be able to pull it off at home. That, that, such an advantage at home. Such an advantage. Let's move on to the Sunday games. This is a scheduling disaster. There's nine early games, two midday games. I have no clue why that is, but we'll start there. Miami at Minnesota. Right now, it's too early for betting percentages. Nine and a half point favorites are Minnesota at home. Fat guy, who you got? I'm going to take Miami. But let's, we have to break... We need, we need, this needs to be, this needs to be recognized. That Miami play at the end of the game, that's a play of the season. That was awesome. It was awesome. I can't remember a game finishing like that in a long time. No, I can't. You know, the best part is me and Big Ryder are arguing about 
if the Patriots should turn the ball over purposely on fourth down and like just try and like get someone to throw an incomplete pass. And oddly enough, that would have worked better. And I on uh, Gronk not being able to make the the tackle. And what was with the, who was it? Was it Gilmore and Harmon that couldn't make a tackle there? They're just standing there in zone. Anyways, well, it was such a bizarre way that they had it set up. Like they were scared that they were going to chuck it across the field to some guy sprinting down. Yeah, well, let them chuck it across the field. If they pull off a Music City miracle, good for them. And they did. That was awesome. Shout out to you, Miami. That was awesome. That was awesome. Now, I don't expect that to happen in this Minnesota game, but Miami just keeps getting laid all these points. I mean, you take that touchdown out, they're still covering. Do I think they can do that on the road in Minnesota? Yeah. Minnesota has been unconvincing, and I, I was a big homer for Minnesota this entire year, and frankly, I've been disappointed. I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to take the points. I'm down with that sickness. Next up, we got the Oakland Raiders traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. 67% of early bettors are on the Raiders. Only 33% on the lowly Bengals as three-point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? I'm going to take the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I am wearing a Raiders hat, so but everyone should know my allegiance is only to calories, not to teams when it comes to betting. I get it because you're fat. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. So I think the Cincinnati Bengals had a pretty good game. Pretty good game against the Chargers. I mean, all things considered, it's a tough, tough trip. East Coast to West Coast against a top tier team in the NFL. And frankly, you've been playing awful pretty much every week. I mean, so it's a decent performance. Raiders pulling off an upset win. Raiders against the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is fantastic. Yeah, watching Boswell slip and fall for the game tying field goal was something. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, it's just great. It's clad. Just, just vintage Raiders. You're not going to win nice. This team isn't going to win nice. That so, was the one time that their field helped them out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember J- Janikowski kicking 60 yarders from the dirt. I mean, so I guess that's what happened when you play in a baseball stadium. That's why every kicker that should play there should be at least 250 pounds. That way you get solid you, you footing. Get good traction with long spikes. Yeah, maybe you should kick for the Raiders. I, actually, I can kick a mean field goal. You'd think so. It's kind of like Ndamukong calling Sue, like running up there, 6'6", 300-pound guy, running yeah. up for the kick. I did play soccer my whole life. Not very well, obviously. You're like the Kareem Hunt of kicking. <laughs> yeah, only women and children. But anyways, enough about us. Uh, the Oakland Raiders, yeah, they had such a good performance against Pittsburgh Steelers. I think they're due for a due down. I mean, Cincinnati did manage to win the game, but they did have a decent performance. I like Cincinnati at home. I, I'm going to catch the flack on it, but I mean, it's not like... This is a pretty ugly game. Like, this isn't a game that's going to get flexed to the evening. I mean, these are two bottom dwellers. I'm just going to take the home team in this, in this spot. So, Cincinnati Bengals it is, even though I seem to take them every week. Next up, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. 63% of early bettors are on the Bucks as eight-point underdogs. Fat guy, who you got? Another thing I hate doing, we're going to lay a lot of points. We're going to take the Ravens. Ravens were raw. Raw, but how does every broken play, every broken play, Tyreek Hill somehow gets open. They just saved, saved the Chiefs. Because he's quick, he's agile, he's fast. Who's yeah. going to cover him? Who's going to cover there's, him when there's plays nobody. Break down? There really is happen. nobody. And they had CJ Mosley like trying his best. I felt, felt so bad for him. It just shows you how good that Baltimore defense is. Uh, Baltimore defense is pretty good. Ugh. Anyways, uh, also too, they had two fourth down conversions, the Chiefs. Oh, oh, at the end of the game. I just wanted Baltimore to win that game. I don't know why. I was became a Raven for a... Uh, for, for a little while, maybe because they're the real Browns. But anyways, I, I like the Baltimore Ravens at home. I think their defense is stout. Uh, Tampa Bay, ah, it's, they're gonna have trouble moving the ball, aren't they? They're just gonna have trouble moving the ball. They're going into Baltimore. They had a reasonable performance against the Saints. I was almost lamenting the pick, finally taking the Saints. Saints did right by me, they covered. We got it right two weeks in a row with the Saints. It's the first time this season. But we're going with Baltimore. I think they're gonna be able to beat the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, Bucks are kind of floundering, but Maybe they, maybe they didn't start targeting Mike Evans more. He's been on a little bit of a lull as far as touchdowns go, and that's kind of was their bread and butter when they were having some success in past years. So maybe that's maybe what they should be doing. A little bit more Evans, a little bit more Chris Godwin, maybe a little less Peyton Barber. But I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens, and I expect a dominant performance from them. 
Next up, the Dallas Cowboys travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. 65% of early bettors are on the Cowboys, only 35% on the Colts as two and a half point favorites at home. In fact, I'll give you an extra second here just to chow down. What are you eating tonight? Mm, shirt lettuce, uh, a pepperoni pizza, and a sub. All right, so how about that pick? Who do you like, the Cowboys or the Colts? Colts. I think Colts are severely underrated. I want to see what the Super Bowl line is. I didn't take a look at them. I mean, obviously they're, they're like a tier three team, but they do have they do have the, the right stuff, let's say. I kind of like how the Colts team is built. I think they're sneaky good. Um, they, they're capable of excellent and terrible performances. And you kind of need to go on a run when you're gonna at least make a run at it. And it, they haven't made the playoffs yet, not by a long shot. But I think they're one to look out for, especially going forward in the future. The offensive line is excellent. Defense is playing so much better than in past years. They managed to beat Houston, Texas on the road. And it, it was felt pretty good. I mean, I think they only won by three at the end of it because of a Hopkins touchdown. But they were um, they were trailblazing for a bit. Yeah, what are the odds right now with their fat guy or big ride? Well, fat guy, they do say two hundred to one, which I find hard to believe. I don't know if I believe this. That's on. That's on a. That's a quick Google search. So let's not take that. Uh, take that for granted. It's probably a lot less. But yeah, three. We're gonna have ago. to check the books. I'm probably gonna put a few bucks on there for a for a nice long shot. I really like these Colts. Cowboys are having everything go their way right now. Everything. They have a terrific performance against the Saints. I don't think they're nearly as good against the Eagles here. They were very lucky to get the cover. I mean, it's so hard. How do you lose? How do we not get a cover going overtime with the Eagles? <clears throat> that was another crazy game. This has been a pretty wild weekend. I think the Cowboys are due for a bit of a letdown. I like, I like the Indianapolis Colts. And we just got to win by three. How hard is that? Continue on with the Sunday early games. We got the Detroit Lions traveling to Buffalo to take on the Bills. No betting percentages. The game's even. So, fat guy, who do you like more? Detroit on the road or Buffalo at home? Oh, I, this is another dog's breakfast one. We rolled with the Lions and they managed to beat the Cardinals, who probably are the worst. I mean, the Cardinals, they lost at home to the Raiders. I guess the Cardinals are the worst team. They have Steve Wilkos at coach. I mean, he's got to get off his own stage pretty quick here. He's not going to make laughs. That's good. I like it. Another uh, Steve Wilkos joke. Yeah, yeah. I'm using a nice egg corn just so I can confuse the audience. I can listen to my terrible comedy. But I'm going to take the uh, Buffalo Bills at home. Uh, they, they somehow managed to lose to the Jets. I mean, they're winning the entire game. Uh, Josh Allen is so weird. Like, when he came into the season, I thought it's like, oh, this is a prototypical quarterback. He's just like a lumbering, like like heavy footed running quarterback now. It's really bizarre. It's not what I would have thought. But I think I think they they can beat the Lions. So uh, the Lions aren't that good. They're from a, a let's say a do down situation with a reasonable performance against the worst team in the league. They won a game they should have won. And some people didn't like laying points on the road with the Lions last week and I don't blame them. But if you did manage to take a gamble on the Lions, you were rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sneeze on that food. <laughs> We're just gonna take a quick break here. We're gonna cut that, obviously. No, no, let's do that Roman sponsor stuff, that ED stuff. I that want a stuff. Neti Pot so I can get a brain of Eva parasite. That's hot stuff right now. So yeah, I'm gonna take the Buffalo Bills at home, and I think the defense can shut out, well not shut out, but shut down this uh, not so well oiled Detroit offense. You know, I was thinking something that's kind of interesting about if you hire like a new offensive coach, you have like a better chance than if you hire a defensive coach because the rules are so slanted to the offense, it feels like this year. Or maybe this year is just an anomaly in itself. But all the defensive coaches just really aren't not having a good time, really. I think the best one's been Greg Williams as an intern. But if you think about Matt Patricia, this is not that, this is not that kind of a year. You think about Steve Wilkos, the Arizona Cardinals, not that good a year. Matt Nagy, Sean McVay last year. I mean, they're just kind of offensive coaches are flying around. It makes me wonder about Kyle Shanahan, but we're talking about the Buffalo Bills at home to the Detroit Lions. So let's take the Bills and just the Bills to win. It's as simple as that. Next up, we have the Green Bay Packers traveling to Chicago to take on the Bears. 
Still too early for betting percentages, but the Bears are five and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Oh, I'm taking the Green Bay Packers. Told you. I like these coaching switches. And we got a full performance from the Green Bay Packers against the Atlanta Falcons. On defense, they contributed. They contributed. On offense, they contributed. I expect their offense to get a little bit better as it goes along. Feels like Rodgers is a little bit more of a free reign. Devonta Adams with his just vintage, vintage won a game touchdown, which is just great. I like the Green Bay Packers. Ringo. <laughs> I like the Green Bay Packers. And don't forget, this is a rematch of their week one fiasco where they're down, what, 20 to nothing at halftime? Sure. And they managed to, yeah, as if you have any memory whatsoever. And then they managed to come right back and uh, and beat the Bears. And then kind of, I don't know, I kind of thought it was like set the tone for Green Bay, but it was quite the opposite. The Bears are who we thought they were. They're, they're a strong team. So I, I, I still like that you get five and a half points with the Green Bay Packers. It's, uh, I don't know, just feels a little bit better. It feels like the Bears are a little bit due down. Because they won, they won kind of how they should have won if they were going to beat the uh, LA Rams. Yeah, and you got points in that game too. So I like the Green Bay Packers, and I like the points. Five and a half, divisional game. Give me the Packers. Next up, the Tennessee Titans travel to New York to take on the Giants. 61% of early bettors are on Tennessee. 39% on the Giants as three-point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Tennessee. Tennessee? I don't like the Giants. We all know that. I went against them last week. Because I just wasn't sure. They're bad. They've been on a bit of a roll. They have been on a bit of a roll. I mean, Odell's like, yeah, we're going to run the table. I guess maybe they are. Maybe they are. They have to beat Tennessee, though. Tennessee Titans had an electric performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars, particularly Derrick Henry. Was it just bad tackling, or was it Derrick Henry? I really want to know. Maybe it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B. Yeah, and a lot of C. Yeah. And the Giants, they destroyed the Redskins. The Redskins are the most injured team I've probably ever seen. They, they started Mark Sanchez and resorted to uh, replacing him after a 40 nothing deficit with Arena Football League first overall pick, Josh Johnson. Yeah, boy. Like, it's not, not, it's not that impressive. And of course they shut, shut down Adrian Peterson because you're not afraid of them throwing it, you know? Their number one wide receiver is Josh Doxson. Like, the cover is bare, cover is bare. I mean, we're talking about the Redskins, but I'm, I'm talking about how the Giants beat him because Beating them really isn't that big a deal at this moment. The start of the year, I would have been very impressed they were able to do that with a healthy Redskins team, but they're so depleted. So the Giants' victory doesn't impress me, and the Titans' victory kind of does impress me. I think the Titans are just a far better team. I like the Titans' secondary. I really think Titans' secondary is good. Uh, let's see if I can shut down the prima donna Odell Beckham. And maybe cover his back. That's usually what he really prefers. But I like the Tennessee Titans, and I want to see the Tennessee Titans establish the run like they did against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It just it just makes more sense to me. Feels like, like they don't do it enough. And the Derrick Henry always bounces runs to the outside. Maybe let's design some runs to the outside. I like how he's the heavy guy and he runs, like all his big runs are to the outside. Yeah, it drives me crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy. He's not that physical. And then Deion Lewis, I feel is like better inside the tackles and he's about as big as you are, it's a joke. But whatever, they're both talented running backs but you really gotta cater to their styles, I guess. I want to see you have more of an identity because Mariota, it's very hard to, it's very hard to lean on him for a key performance. I mean, he did have like a pretty much a perfect day against what was it, Houston, and they got killed. Sure, because they made it pretty easy for him. I, I, I just don't trust Mariota in all the big games. I'd rather just had like a standard power run, uh, I guess run and shoot, which never really worked in the '80s. But I, I'd rather have more of an identity as a running team because they are built for it. They do have the offensive line. So I'm going long on this one, but I really do like the Titans, but I expect them to be more consistent because they aren't. And this could this could be a sneaky one where they just fail to a really a lowly Giants team. I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans, but I have my trepidations about it. I could probably kiss Dion Lewis in the nipples. <laughs> Next up, the Redskins travel to Jacksonville to take on the Jags. We just heard a lot about the Redskins, so how do you feel about the Jags? But before that, the percentages are 26-74. People are favoring Jacksonville early on as six and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Every week, every week I take the Jags. I took them last week, very disappointing. The defense, for how talented they are, how could you play so badly? 
Tackling was a joke. Was Everything a joke. was a joke. It's crazy. And the other scary thing about Jacksonville is they're kind of losing the locker room. They're like they're letting J- Jalen Ramsey become defensive Odell Beckham. I mean, those guys pretty much play for the same team anyway, so I guess I get it. Bingo. But I think Jacksonville. I mean, don't forget they shut out the Colts in the six nothing game. Are they capable of doing that against the Redskins? Yeah, yeah. The Redskins are going to start Josh Johnson or Mark Sanchez. Or if in some freaky world they sign Colin Kaepernick off the street, he's a vegan. I don't like those guys' chances against the Jacksonville defense who needs to show up. They, 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 can, they are capable of playing well. I don't think they're going to let Washington embarrass them like they were embarrassed on Thursday night. I really like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's just get some Fournette action. Let's get him going. Let's get him going. And you have other stables of guys back there. You got Yeldon, Carlos Hyde. I don't even think got a carry last uh, last week against the Tennessee Titans. I like the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I like them a lot. We can win by a touchdown. Why can't we do it? I mean, there should, aren't many teams that they should be a touchdown favorite over. But the Redskins are so floundering. I mean, usually when they're due down, you take the other side. But both teams are really due down. And I'm going to take the better team, who I thought was one of the... What a, it was a contender at the start of the year. I need the Jacksonville Jaguars. I need some sort of performance. I, I really do. Give me some sort of faith going into next year, Tom Coughlin. The final Sunday early game is the Arizona Cardinals traveling to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. No betting percentages. Falcons are 10-point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Not jazzed about this one. Really not jazzed about this one. You make it so hard. It's always there's so many like double-digit spreads. I'm going to have to take the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, do I think they're good? No. Like I mentioned, they're probably the worst team in the league. You lost to Oakland at home, and then you just got beat pretty reasonably by Detroit at home. Now I have to take them on the road against the Falcons? Yeah, I guess so. It's 10 points, though. That's really the only reason I'm doing this. Uh, I, Atlanta, Atlanta has just disappointed everybody this year. Atlanta's capable of beating them 40-3 to or something like that. But 10 points is too many. I think the median game is maybe Atlanta by... By nine, it's, it, this is like a razor thin line for me. I'm really not jazzed about it. Let's take the Arizona Cardinals, who are floundering. It gets a floundering hot line of Falcons. All right, let's move on to Sunday's midday games, where the Seahawks travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. 60 percent of early betters are on Seattle as five and a half point favorites on the road. Fat guy, who you got? Well, don't forget, this This is recorded on Sunday. In fact, I almost choked. It wouldn't be the first time. Don't forget, this is recorded on Sunday, so anything could happen more or more or less, and that could affect the line. You get a Russell Wilson injury. I hope it doesn't happen, but it could happen. I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers. I expect them to have a, a bounce-back performance from their original game in Seattle. I mean, they did pull off a victory against Denver. Denver doesn't travel well, though. That doesn't surprise me. Kyle Shanahan finally had a good performance. But let's see him win and get something that some sort of, has some sort of meaning. Beating the Seahawks at home, if you want to be a successful team, I don't care who you have playing quarterback. I don't care about your injuries. You need to beat this Seahawks team. But see, they, have, they still have a better roster, I think, than Seattle. Seattle just knows how to just get the most out of their guys. Just really impressed with this coaching performance from Seattle. Because really, this was supposed to be a down year. And they're in the hunt. Good for them. Good for them. And then, don't forget, they have this game against Minnesota. Not sure how that's going to pan out. But as it stands, I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm going to take the points. And you just should really be able to cover. You should be able to win this game against the 49ers and you want success going forward. This is, this is going to be a battle of coaching. Shanahan should... Should be the guy that comes ahead theoretically, but I don't know if he can get get the most out of his guys like Pete Carroll can. I'm going to take the San Francisco 49ers, but I, I do have trepidations about this game as well. The second Sunday midday game is the New England Patriots traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Still too early for betting percentages, but the Steelers are two and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Both teams are due up. Emotional losses for both teams. I'm going to take the Steelers, who are, I guess, a two game losing streak now. Losing the Chargers and losing to the Oakland Raiders. And is it maybe it's three games because they lost to Denver as well. This is a. The Steelers are kind of like a little bit of a humming, well oiled machine, but those three losses are really games that you should have won. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, 
I do think the Pats are playing better football right now. But I think this is going to be a good a good bounce back for them this week. I feel like they play every week and it's always exciting. Uh, it's it's pretty much a coin flip either way. I think it I, I think it's going to be a really good game. This would be a decent game to watch. I feel like they battle every year in some format. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm going to lay the points. Yeah, they haven't won since November 18th, which was a win against Jacksonville in Jacksonville. and a, They barely won that game, yeah, too. they came from behind, I believe, to win that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Jalen Ramsey that game for sure. <laughs> Sunday night football, Philadelphia Eagles, L.A. Rams. Still too early for betting percentages, but the Rams are nine and a half point favorites at home. Fat guy, who you got? Just a lot of points. It's a lot of points. Nine and a half points. You are at home. I'm not gonna take the Philadelphia Eagles. I seem to take them on the road all the time. The Eagles, which is weird. But I mean, they are. They were a Super Bowl caliber team last year. It's such a big spread. It's such a big spread. I mean, I, and the Rams. They. I mean. They put up six points. They put up a stinker on offense. Lots of turnovers. In a pretty, uh, I guess, odd game against the Bears. What did, they, what did they throw? Four, three, four picks? Felt like a lot. Felt like a lot. Gave up a safety. Offense didn't do very well. It's the first game they floundered. And this is a game I, team I feel is probably the best in the league in the uh, LA Rams. They should have a bit of a bounce back. Philadelphia had an emotional loss too. They lost an overtime to a tip ball. I mean, oh, doesn't get what worse than that. I like the Philadelphia Eagles, and this will be a nice rematch from last year. But I, it's, I don't think they're going to win, but I like the nine and a half points. And they had a really nice game in LA last year. There's some good scheduling by the uh, by the old NFL as far as matchups go, because the Rams, the Rams Eagles game last year was one of the more exciting ones. It's not going to have the same cloud as it did last year because the Eagles aren't nearly as good as the Rams are this year. But nine and a half points is a big enough spread where it's hard for me to hard for me to justify going against the Eagles. And on Monday Night Football, the New Orleans Saints travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. 45% of early bets are on the Saints, 55% on the Panthers as seven-point underdogs at home. Fat guy, who you got? First of all, can you just say New Orleans once? Like New Orleans. And then you then you put this stupid accent, hyper hyperbolic accent. Well, I'm wearing yeah. the hat. The hats, yeah, yeah, they're they're Australian in Louisiana. That's what they sound like. I might. Yeah. Well, anyways, this is where I'm going to catch a lot of flack. I'm going to uh, Carolina Panthers. Panthers are what, winless in five. Ron Rivera, seat heating up. Can he get a good performance at home against division rival New Orleans Saints? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to be that guy. I like the Carolina Panthers. I like that you get seven points in the divisional matchup, contested divisional matchup at home. Cam Newton says he's been playing his best ball. No, he hasn't. He threw four picks against Tampa Bay two weeks ago. Ho hum, couldn't get it done down the stretch against Cleveland for the win. I like the Carolina Panthers though this week. I think they're gonna go against it. Christian McCaffrey's been a bit of a monster. I didn't foresee this. I really didn't foresee this. I almost thought this would be more of a down year, but he's uh, he's been a little bit surprising. For his whole career, really. Really? His NFL career. I thought he was yeah. gonna be Hacksaw Ridge coming into the, yeah. into the NFL. Yeah, exactly, with no weapon, right? Exactly. And Curtis Samuels had, a, <clears throat> I guess, a reasonable campaign from Man. doing absolutely nothing last year. <sighs> Whatever. Wh whatever, yeah. Uh, but regardless, I'm going to take the Carolina Panthers. I mean, the Saints are, are pretty much still red hot. I don't care that they lost to Dallas two weeks ago. They, they managed to come back, I guess, against Tampa Bay. That, was, that, was, that game felt a little bit closer than, you know, closer than it actually was. But I'm going to, that being said, like I said, I, like I'm harping again, harping going long on this one. Carolina Panthers in the points. Divisional game. Highly contested. Give me the points. All right, Fat Guy. Time for the lightning round. Let's start off on Thursday night with the L.A. Chargers traveling to Kansas City. Yeah, I'm going to take the L.A. Chargers. On Saturday, we have two games. Houston at the New York Jets. The New York Jets. Game three. Game two on Saturday. Cleveland at Denver. Denver Broncos at home. Now on to all the early Sunday games. Miami at Minnesota. Miami on the points. Oakland at Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Bengals. Tampa Bay at Baltimore. Baltimore Ravens. Dallas at Indianapolis. Colts for the win. Detroit at Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills. 
Green Bay at Chicago. Green Bay Packers. Tennessee at the New York Giants. Tennessee Titans. Washington at Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Arizona traveling to Hot Atlanta. Oh, come on. Arizona Cardinals. I don't like it. Now on to the Sunday midday games where there's only two. Seattle at San Francisco. San Francisco 49ers. New England at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Steelers. On Sunday night football, Philadelphia at the LA Rams. Going to take the Eagles in the points. And on Hank Williams Jr.'s Monday Night Football, the New Orleans Saints traveling to Carolina. Carolina Panthers with the points. With the points. All right. Are there any games that you want to go over last week, cover-wise? The Baltimore-Kansas City game was exciting. Oh, it was exciting. It was annoying, though. I, I really thought the Ravens should have won that game. Really thought. Another shout-out to Miami on one of the greatest finishes ever. That was so awesome. It was awesome. And to see... It's, Sorry, I just harped on it so hard. A procedural error from New England, that's like the one thing you don't see. Yeah, I can remember two crazy. now. One was when they were playing Kansas City and Tyreek Hill got that bomb. It's like the only guy who can score quick. Why don't you cover that dude? That was a procedural error by New England this year, which is very uh, you know uncharacteristic, I guess. And then again, it happened with the closing out with Miami. It was just so such a cool play. There's a lot of wild games this weekend. At least it was a little bit more exciting than usual. Offensive lineman for the win in Chicago. That was kind of cool. I, I like those types of games. 15-6 to six with, what, seven interceptions? Minimal offensive production. That's a fat guy's type of game. Yeah. Cleveland getting it done on fourth and goal to, yes. to Carolina. The Browns. The Cleveland Browns. Managing to get it done. And Baker Mayfield. Is he the best quarterback Cleveland's had since they've come back? Is he, is he a young Tim Couch? Yeah, he is. <laughs> Oh, I hope he's a lot better than that. <laughs> Who else? There's New Orleans came from behind to, to to not only win but to get the cover. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, we were kind of lucky to get the cover there. Eight points. Woo! When they win by fourteen. So we got Saints got it done. So so many Saints fans are salty. That division's salty too. Like the when we did that video on the Atlanta Falcons, everyone's saying Super Bowl fifteen and one. Where, like, anything can happen. I mean, yeah, they were wrong. We were right. Big deal. But everybody in that division is salty. The only ones that were realistic, I feel, were, like, Bucks fans. But every team thought they were going to win a Super Bowl. The Carolina fans thought that. The Saints fans thought that. And they, that might actually happen. And the Falcons fans thought that. Saints really are the really ones that only have a chance out of that crew. They're probably the only ones that are going to make the playoffs, sadly. But that, that whole division, just the salty fans. I guess that's how it is in the South. You go against me. I hate you forever. That is that is true, I guess. I want to talk about San Francisco and specifically George Kittle. How much did he finish with? How many zero, yards? zero yards in the second half. So he had like 210. Yeah, two, it was 210. Oh, it really was zero in the second half? Yeah. He didn't break the record. He's he four yards over. short. He went over in the second half. Well, maybe he's by design, maybe because they knew they were going to block down on him. George Kittle is a tight end in the future, no question about it. It's kind of like a... Like a fluid Gronk body type. You know how I am about male bodies. I know what I'm talking about there. Yeah, that makes you, Jalen Ramsey, and Odell Beckham as the body specialist. Yeah, definitely. Just on the male physique. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do think George Kittle is tight end of the future. He's tight. He's going to be a high, a high fantasy draft pick for me next year. That's for sure. That is without question. And especially because San Francisco is a little bit weak in the receiving core. So, it does help him in that fashion. So, yeah, I, I do think George Kittle is a big deal. I mean, it's not just this one performance. He's been in a powerhouse all the year for the 49ers. I mean, I guess that's kind of a light term because the 49ers haven't had the offensive production that you might have expected. But George Kittle has been the lion's share of all the targets. I think he's the most targeted player in the NFL, oddly enough. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it is very high. I know that. Especially when you're competing with Zach Ertz for targets as far as uh, NFL-wide and tight end-wide. It is difficult to, to keep pace. But George Kittle has, has having a sneaky uh, all-pro season, I feel. Yeah, we talked a lot there about male physiques and tight ends, but I miss the number one loose end in the NFL, Kevin Booth. Oh, Kevin Booth. With the body of a rotting pear. <laughs> yeah, the guy's human grimace. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a human grimace. A grimace is a taste bud. What a weird thing for McDonald's. They have this purple, weird 
creepy guy who has a taste bud. And Ronald McDonald and the bur the burglar both look like pedophiles. That crew was scary. Them and the Chuck E. Cheese crew, like how does that appeal to kids? I think Ronald McDonald and it are about the same thing. Bronies, that's it for us. Good luck with your NFL Week 15 picks. And subscribe for more Big Ryan the Fat Guy. You know, more of that Grimace talk next time. That was we good. we got to trim more of the fat, not just me. You didn't even finish your food. I'm supposed to eat a whole sub and pizza while I'm talking. We were recorded already... for, for 37 minutes and you couldn't eat that? It was all over my shirt. And you only do like 10 seconds of audio. So I got to put these, this, these bites, fire down this monster cave of mouth of mine. I've seen this guy eat a large pizza on the way home while he's driving. And like, it's like a five minute drive. Yeah, whatever. <laughs>